some dark flash drive with all the files that you will require. I have also QCAO image for QMUKVM that you can use if you don't want to mess up your computer because you will need to install about six, seven packages on Fedora. So, yeah. So, the goal that we are trying to achieve across Red Hat is to share as much of tooling as possible with Fedora. That means open source anything that we can because Fedora can't they have a rule that they cannot use anything which is not open source. Also, it should be published on open source, um, let's say, you know, like GitHub and s and so on. So it shouldn't be closed source. GitHub is, um, uh, it's not fully open source as far as I know. So it should be on Azure and so on. Um, so the list of upstream projects that I selected is not the biggest one. I think that we have about, let's say five times more but these are the ones that I think that matters as far as Linux distribution goes, because we are building also some JBoss products and so on. Koji, uh, who hasn't heard about Koji? No, <laughs> I don't believe it. So Koji is a build system that we are using uh, in Red Hat, also in Fedora project. Uh, I don't know about any other bigger projects, maybe you guys know but I don't think that CentOS is using it. However, uh, this tool is, basically if I will tell you that there is nothing that we should publish to customers that wasn't built in Koji, I think that I would be right. So, uh, if you have the presentation, all of these uh, should be links, which will take you to the project site or some demos, so this is how it looks like. I don't want to go through the whole Koji because that would be for two hours. So basically think of it of about uh, build system, and it's also a tool which enables you to execute remotely commands. Let's say that you would like to build your own distribution on all of architecture. Architecture is not just the one that's on, let's say, your laptop. So you might use Koji to run some commands on different hosts based on, based on inputs. Could be anything which is registered as host within the system. Remote execution is called basically a run route. Um, so if you are interested in build systems, if you think that you might need one for the company, definitely look at the project. Uh, I'm not using it in this demo because uh, using the build system would require to have all the packages required for the build and so, and so in the build system that would take several gigabytes and my tarball has only 50 megs. So my source of uh, packages is actually a repository, not the build system. The good thing about Koji is that everything that you will you build in Koji should be reproducible. There, there are time events in history, and you can you know be sure that if you will resubmit the build, it will use exactly the same build root set of packages used for bu for building the package should be exactly the same. Also, within the company, we are using Koji as, as a storage and linking all the packages that has been built and stored in Koji to, let's say, composes, repositories, and so on. So if you would have any questions, ask, but I don't want to spend much time on going through each project. Uh, so Panji, um, this will be the main actual tool in the demo that I would like to show you. I would call it a compose tool. If nobody knows what composes, I would probably call it set of repositories, images, ISOs, basically deliverables, somehow connected through metadata. So you can process metadata and you, you can iterate over all of these, you know, things that you are building. Could be RPMs, ISOs, Docker images, and so on. Product MD, so I mentioned metadata and you don't want to parse JSONs on your own. So we have a library for parsing all, all of the metadata that's being used in Compose. Um, so don't try to write something new. <laughs> Never works. Um, <coughs> all of these projects are actually hosted either on GitHub. So this one is, for example, on GitHub. Um, some of them are on Azure, like Panji. Um, also, we would be so happy if, and if, if you will try the tooling, it will fail for some reason. You know, just don't throw it away report issue, hey, I was running this, you know, it failed, trade back, whatever, just submit whatever you can, it's really helping. Because, you know, we are using uh, our tools in a very specific way, 
we are probably not going to change the way how we are using it. So you guys will have different use cases and it might just not work for you. PDC. Has anybody heard of PDC? It's, oh, awesome, awesome. More than I thought. <laughs> Uh, so PDC is Product Definition Center. Um, so again, release engineering is using the tool in a different way than quality assurance and so on. So I will talk on behalf of release engineering. So I've told you that we have Compose, which is a set of repositories, ISO files, Docker images, bootable images, and uh, we have metadata, but it's just some JSON locally. It, doesn't, it does have API through the Product MD, the library for parsing the metadata. However, it's usually stored on the destination which is not accessible to everyone. And PDC, for me at least, is a, let's say, a service which is storing all of these, all of these uh, metadata. You can basically, you can filter them, you can, it has huge, big API that you can use and it's very comfortable to use. So uh, Lubos actually told me that uh, Fedora project has a testing instance. I don't think that it's fully populated, but it might give you some opinion about how it could look like. So how we track things in PDC is that you have product, for example, Fedora, then you have release like Fedora 24, and this release is linking composes, which are sets of repositories, and each compose has uh, basically subsections, RPMs, images, and you can basically see uh, everything which was built inside the compose in PDC could be used for CI, CI can just listen, hey, new compose was imported, let me, let me see if there was a Docker image, yes, there was a Docker image, uh, what's the metadata for the Docker image, and they can decide whether they want to test it or not. Yeah. So this is quite useful, actually. Right. Uh, oh, sorry guys, wrong link, wrong link. <laughs> <laughs> It's not all, def definitely <laughs> not. <laughs> so let me go for the here. Will it work? Click PDC? No, okay, so. Uh, HTML5 is beautiful, but I'm not sure if it's always useful. Oh, back, PDC. So basically, we have a compose, set of RPMs images. We have metadata, we've already imported it into PDC. Now we would like to publish it to customers. It doesn't have to be, you know, external customer. It can be team within your company. So uh, PDC can also store mappings. Let's say that all the RPMs from this section of Compose goes to this location. So you can basically store all of these mappings, and then you can use, uh, for example, Pulp to distribute them. So. Uh, Internally at Red Hat, we have a layer in between them. There is another tooling which is basically parsing the data from PDC. And then we are actually creating some sort of transformation above Compose and pushing it to individual delivery channels. They can be FTP, it can be RHN, it can be so many other services. You name it. And Pulp is basically a repository manager that we are using. It's also being used in one of our products. Uh, so, I believe that Fedora might actually consider to use it as well. I don't think that they decided. Just saying that it's out there, it's open source, it's actually originally from Red Hat. Feel free to use it. I'm not using it in this demo, that would be so much overkill. <laughs> and I think that's all about it. Coffee break, no, I think that we went through it quite fast actually. So, but if anybody would like a coffee, uh, I would like to move to the more like, um, the technical part with the demo. So it might actually take some time to get the tarballs with the data. So guys, if anybody wants coffee, I think it's a uh, right time. If you are all set, it's even better. So uh, does everybody have internet connection? And how many of you actually have Fedora? Because I have a virtual, awesome, awesome. So the, uh, those of you who want to try it, there is a 50 megabytes tarball. You can just download it. You will have to install packages like uh, yamutils, create repo, and these are actually basically used for creating uh, repositories. And the tooling that, I, uh, that is actually located in Tarball requires them. 
So if you don't want to mess up your computer, feel free to use the QCOW image. It's working. I was testing it today. It's uh, on my flash drive. So or here as well. So just ask for it. So let me stream it on the screen, actually. So are you downloading it? Sure, sure, I will wait, no worries. Uh, yeah, flash. I have actually terrible here. If you want to borrow it, it will be much faster. <laughs> Just pass it over. Uh, so the presentation is called, I believe, Building Distribution the Red Hat Way, while the data is called DevConf 2016. So use the DevConf one. So uh, I was tr uh, thinking of a small package set that would be like 50 packages, and the depth solving would be complete. And I was thinking of a uh, distribution which consists of uh, three different shells, bash, corner shell, and ZSH, Z shell. So uh, there is a setup which allows you to build distribution, including all of the, all of the dependencies. So it's not going to be bootable distribution, definitely, <laughs> because that would require Anaconda and a few other things. However, if you will iterate through the configs, you can basically build it up to the bootable distribution. However, it does have ISO files. So, uh, yeah. So if somebody would be actually looking for the tarballs, uh, people are had to come on. Yeah. It's, uh, it's here. I know, I know, I know. So wait for the flash drive. Uh, I'll wait a few more minutes. Meanwhile, I, I can just get my desktop ready. Would be maybe cool to show you uh, our pleasure. What sort of projects do we have? So as far as release engineering goes on Pajure, Pajure is basically open source, open source uh, version of, um, I would say, source control management web UI system, something like GitHub or SourceForge. It's quite new actually. <coughs> Developers are from Red Hat, they are super responsive. If you have some issue, it doesn't work. It, it was uh, really like crappy from the beginning. And each issue that I filed was solved in one day. It was a really awesome experience. So the tool that we are going to use is called Panji. It's the Compose tool. It's located on Pajure under Panji. Feel free to check it out. We have documentation, sort of. Uh, it's more likely a... a RST with example configuration. This is for Fedora, I would say. Yep, definitely. <laughs> oh, here. Cool. So, um, one thing. Uh, the Panji itself can actually gather data from multiple locations. One of them can be the build system that I was talking about, Koji. So as I said, Koji would be overhead. It would be a few additional gigabytes on the, in the tarball. So I decided to use just the repository with set of images. Uh, repo closure should pass on them, as far as I remember. Um, and uh, otherwise, you can, you can easily use Koji. If you are using just the local environment, you are actually lacking run root. So you can only run, run it on the native architecture of your host. But for this purpose, it will be sufficient, I would say. So, oh, does it need to be centralized to the brass? I see not so. Okay. So you guys have to imagine the very first character because it's not fully visible. <laughs> 
Yeah, but then it won't be full screen. Yeah, could work as well. So this is the readme file. Oh, I know. So install requirements. Basically, you can see that it's create repo C, pi kickstart, uh, Selenix utils, ISO MD5 sum because we are producing ISO files for DVDs. Panji can create both uh, bootable images and non-bootable images. So the Kobo, Kobo here is set of wrappers. Um, we are using so many functions from it. It's also open sourced. <laughs> so as I said, what I, what I would like to achieve is to create some sort of distribution with ISO files. It will have just the shells, that, uh, shells plus dependencies. You have full control on config files. You can add some more packages. If you can d generate some fake ones, Yesterday I was thinking whether to generate 1,000 of some fake packages from dictionary or just take something which makes sense. So for me, shells were quite small. Everybody set? Also, the um, I believe the flash drive has also bootable image. So if you are using bootable image, you will just boot into Fedora, which already has it under root. So what I would like to go through and what I believe is the main goal is to show you how to use it, tell you all the features, what the Compose can actually, uh, Pungy can actually generate, because it's not just RPMs, it's not just ISOs, it's so, so much more. And um, I believe that it can be useful for people who are building distribution and they might not even think of what everything should be inside. So this tooling is currently being used to build Red Hat Enterprise Linux 5, 6, 7. Also, you know, for so many other layered products, layered product is something that you install on top of other, other product. So we are all set for layered products as well. Of course, we, we are stuck on different versions of the Panji across the company and we can't change it you know during the product life cycle so it's the code base is a little bit different but this is the new, newest one if you would have any problems with the tarball just let me know um, I have it all locally it takes a few seconds to generate new one with fixes also the tarball is basically git repository so if you would feel like you messed something up just you know reset it to head and it should be clean. You can start again. Those of you who already have the tarball extracted, feel free to read the readme file. Uh, you might actually want to go to conf directory, which hosts basically all of the configuration. As I said, it should be, oh, uh, so the default paths are root devconf because I created the tarball for the QCAL image actually, which is only having root user. So the first thing that you will have to do is to change the, these two paths to your you know location where the directory is, and that should be all. So we are still waiting for a few guys. Let me quickly go through the config file. I will go through it once more once everybody set up. So this is probably the very minimal um, config that you can come come with. I call the release devconf Linux. So I think it matches the purpose. Release short. This is basically the string that will appear on ISO files as far as file names goes. Also, you know the directory structure will use devconf inside the name. Is layered. This is basically whether you are building product which is supposed to be on the bare metal or you are actually building a product which is supposed to be on top of another product. Bootable, false, you know, we can't really boot bash. Comps files. Uh, 
This is an XML, which is basically setting the building blocks for the whole compose. So you can say, my product is going to consist, consist of variant called, let's say, Fedora Workstation. And the Fedora Workstation will consist of several groups. Let's call it Core, Network Utils, Network Services, Web Server. So, uh, and this you know, web server is going to consist of HTTP and a few others, and you can iterate like this. And this is basically all defined in a single or multiple XML files within, we call it comps. It's also being held in repo data as um, package groups, basically. It can be either SCM or the uh, file locally. I've just found another bug, which is kind of, it will fail if you will use just the path instead of, uh, instead of the uh, SCM dictionary. So please use git. In this case, we'll fix it. There is a guy who will probably fix it. He's responsible for it. <laughs> um, variance files. So basically, comps is just grouping the set of packages. Let's call it web server, uh, my, um, let's say SQL server, core, I'm just thinking network services and so on. And the variance is actually grouping them inside uh, into variants. So let's say variant server will consist of 24 comps groups. So the variance is actually defining like a more abstract, abstract layer above the comps groups. Sick keys. Uh, so if you are building RPMs for your company or if you are working on some product, you might know that uh, these RPMs are being signed with, um, with some key, which is identifying you as a vendor. So uh, Sick keys uh, is set of keys with uh, priority from left to right. So none means that you allow unsigned RPMs to be inside your distribution. You shouldn't do it on production. It should be always signed, ideally. If you are doing something internal only, it can be unsigned. Three architectures, uh, as I said, we are not using build system or Koji. This means that we can run only on native architecture. Basically, this is going to be the host that I'm going to use. So it's only Intel. Uh, we can do also 32-bit. I decided not to. If you are using 32-bit and 64-bit, you can decide to use multilib. Does everybody know what multilib means as far as distribution goes? That means uh, shipping RPMs of multiple architectures. Usually, we call it primary, secondary. So in 64-bit, it would mean that, for example, you are shipping both 32-bit and 64-bit Firefox or some libraries. Because as, as far maybe you remember back in days when you were actually supposed to use Flash Player on Linux, it was only 32-bit, so you ha you have to have all the libraries you know, on your 64-bit systems, and they had to be 32-bit as well. So we are actually covering these scenarios as well. Java is so typical, you might not might actually need to run 32-bit Java on 64-bit machine. So if uh, you decide to use Multilib, um, it will put basically you know these 32-bit packages into 64-bit repositories. So I left it empty. Run root, this is the remote execution of commands. So let's say that you would like to use, you would like to run uh, make on a non native architecture. So you would call something like koji run root p means a package which would be installed. Let's say that for make, we would probably need, I think it's make utils. And M would be some file system that you might actually need to be mounted in some sort of run route. It's all inside truth. So you might actually need to mount, mount Koji. And then there is the actual use shell. So you can actually use string instead of a dictionary. Uh, sorry, instead of list. And use shell. And then you just do whatever you need to execute. Like, I don't know, echo hello. And it will be just executed, and you could collect the results afterwards. On it would be probably stored somewhere on the mount Koji. So this is how we are using remote execution. So the best approach is if everything is tasking in the build system. Whether you are creating repository or building an ISO file, it should be task. If it's not task, then we are using run root. I think that tasks are much more elegant because they they have def defined API, and it's not something that you are writing by your own. So this is the run route. 
package set source, uh, so it's it should be either Koji, the build system, or the repositories, which means that you have you know some storage with all the RPMs, and you are reading it from the RPMs. So uh, package set repos, this is basically the source for individual architectures. So you can see that x 60, uh, 8664 is being going to be located in my home directory. So inside this test data, uh, sorry, can't see it. Inside this test data, there is actually just directory with RPMs and re uh, repo data, and we are actually using it as the as the source for our distribution. You can set multiple ones. Just read the documentation. Everything is described in there. So these are specific only if you are using the build system. So we are not. So let's just have them commented. Gather source. Uh, comps. Comps means that we are actually reading the building blocks of our distribution from the comps XML file. Can be as well none. And then you can use a section below. It's called additional packages. And you can just say, hey, server variant consists of these and these and these packages. And you can completely sk skip comps groups. So it allows you, I think it's more flexible, but it's more hackish because you can create something that nobody else will be able to read, you know, several conditions. So I would always recommend you to use some valid uh, file like XML that can be validated, everything, and to use uh, sections below that I will show you only in corner cases when you need some exception that it's not, you know, achievable through comms files. I'm not sure if I should show you, you know, like our internal configuration files, but it's it's messy as as long as you are actually as you are joining the dark side. So um, create repo C. That means whether you are using create repo or the new create repo C. I believe that the old create repo was written in Python. Performance difference is huge, so we are using the create repo C. Build install med method. Uh, this is basically. Uh, Let's say you can tweak Anaconda to a product specific, let's say, no, that's the product image, sorry. So build install is basically, uh, you know, a face which generates a bootable image. So create ISO section, this is related to optional. Uh, let's not talk about this here, maybe later, because our demo doesn't cover that and it would be so much additional logic. Multi-lib blacklist. So I've told you that you might actually decide that you would like to ship 32-bit packages on 64-bit system. Blacklist is basically um, also these these uh, multi-lib packages are being the decision making is in some logic. We have several approaches. One is that you might actually decide to keep only libraries to be multi-lib, or you can set that you like you can say you would like to have all multi-lib by default. Or you might just set some exceptions that should be multi-lib and the rest will be just 64 bit, let's say. So you have blacklist for it, you have whitelist. You know, I think that they are pretty much, it's pretty much clear. You can either say this package shouldn't be multi-lib or this package should be multi-lib. Additional packages. This is a section that you can basically use either on top of comps or without them. So you can decide whether you would like to add some specific packages that are not listed in comps groups into some sections of your compose. Filter packages is the exact opposite. You can just say that these packages shouldn't be on these sections. And yeah, we won't really, we won't really use product IDs for our product. And this doesn't make sense unless you are actually building Koji, uh, Docker images. So I would say let's launch the script and let's go through all of the outputs that the script actually generated, and then we can, then probably most of this configuration file will make sense. So if you will go to the DevConf, DevConf 2016 directory, there is a readme, always read readme before, before running anything. You should have these dependencies installed. They might be called different if you are using, let's say, RHEL 7 or CentOS or some other distribution. So if you are, then my recommendation is to iterate through executions and install whatever is missing until it will be installed. And let's just run runme.sh. Yeah, also a good thing would be probably to show you the comms files that I've mentioned. 
davon comes so I basically told you that we are building a product which consists of shells plus dependencies so here is the definition of group sh uh, shells you can have multiple groups for example if you would like to create web server you would have the same group you know similar group but with different packages so you you are supposed to set only the base packages that you really that really matters as far as your distribution goes all the dependencies will be gathered automatically and then the variants file which is basically saying hey we have a variant called core just coincidence and uh, this consists of these architectures you know each variant can be supported on different architectures so you can have server which is for ppc and then you can have client which is only for x86 64 if that makes sense to you and our core variant uh, consists of a single group called shells so basically you can create also variant inside the variant and then we have something called integrated layered product which can be just a single thing that you can install on top of basically anything it doesn't have to be variant specific okay so basically uh, what this is saying that is that our compose is going to have variant core and the variant core is going to consist of shells which are defined in the comes group right so these are so let's actually see how it looks like so if I will use I'll use browser because I believe it will be much more Conf 2016 please so here we go so basically if your script went right I'm not sure if you guys executed it hopefully yes and it finished you should have uh, structured trees under the devconf uh, directory and this will consist of uh, one or more composes you can run it as many times as you want it will just iterate it will create new directory and it will create new symlink pointing to the latest one okay so each compose has some sort of compose id which is uh, created by merging the product uh, or release short which is defined in the punji conf that you guys seen plus the timestamp right and the one in the end means that it's the basically first you have zero one is the second iteration and so on um, the n actually means that it's nightly each compose can have type it can be either production which basically tells hey this distribution build is marked as production otherwise this is just some some testing compose so n is basically you know saying hey this is just this testing compose being run on nightly basis um, status finished if it's finished all is set it can be doomed as well that means that something got broken or can be or it can be running so uh, if it's broken Punji actually allows you to let's say repeat some specific phases like you might not actually want to rerun create repo on all the packages if you know that only iso file creation failed then you might as well consider rerunning just the iso file and see what was wrong so uh, Panji runs, runs everything in phases I will show you after I will go through the whole structure how it looks like and the actual tree structure is in the directory called compose as I said compose is metadata these metadata are created by product MD you can read them again by using product MD it's basically very simple uh, it should actually tell you uh, the directories for all the let's say uh, packages that you have in your distribution so in our case it's just core you can have debug packages ISO files jigdo files and we know that it's only x86 64 <coughs> so this should be a list of all images so as I said this comp uh, this compose is going to produce ISO files they are not bootable because shells are not bootable and here is basically some metadata for the image so in ideal case you would just take this metadata and you would upload it to the PDC which I already spoke about it's definitely better than just uh, you know relying on some files that can be actually deleted by some cleanups at least there's some history 
and RPMs. This is basically uh, JSON with all of RPMs which are located in the compose. As you can see structure, its variant, architecture, and then SRPM, and then the binary RPMs which were created from the SRPM. So as long as you are using product MD, you can easily iterate through it. Exactly, and I'm going to show you how it was actually generated, I mean the uh, dependency tree. So there are several methods. You can say either gather all the dependencies, or you can just skip them, and you, or you can say just include everything which is in the repository. So it's different approaches, you can configure it. So I believe that here, if I would look uh, into configuration file, you would see that we are using the comps and getter method is depths. This means gather all the dependencies as well. It can be none, then it means that, hey, don't take the, uh, the dependencies. It might actually make some sense. Uh, for example, if you have layered product, which is, let's say, being installed on top of Fedora, and the layered product is somehow expecting that it shouldn't contain the same packages which are already on, on Fedora, you can set something which is called Lucaside repository. And this this is saying, hey, is if, you know, some of these dependencies that this package in my comps group requires are present in this repository, just don't include them because we already, you know, they are part of different product, if that makes sense. So you can also set some, I think it's here. I've seen a hand there, so what was the question? What happens if there are multiple versions? Ah, yeah, so um, the uh, greedy method actually built here, if I will show you the source, we have plenty of time, so uh, let's do it. Uh, the greedy method, or the method is actually saying, let's show it. There are, there are several approaches. One is called best match. So basically, it will take the one which is matching the, you know, the best, while it will be the newest one with the all provides that you need. And I think it's alphabetically sorted, actually. So uh, if you have multiple versions, if you are using the build system, and build system is linking packages into tags, and tag can reflect only a single version of package in time, uh, then it's super simple. You have always the version which in Koji or build, uh, or build system terms says, if you take the package, the last one into the tag, it will be always the version. It doesn't matter that the version is older or newer, it's just uh, the timestamp when it was actually somehow tagged into the system. So if you are using repository as a source of data, that's kind of risky, and you are right. It will uh, the method will take the best match, but it doesn't mean that it's the package that you really wanted. Okay. So as far as build system goes, there it's super clear, and there is you know, let's say, if you would like to see, if you would run Fedora Compose, and you would like to see uh, what version of Bash there is going to be, it's going to be this version, and it's super you know. There is strict rule and you can't go over it. If you would like to see all the versions which are in the build system, see? So it's really a matter of which one was actually tagged. The latest tagged usually means, means build basically because the tag is um, an operation which is being done on after, build, after each build. You can say, hey, if I'm building this packages, package from this branch in Git, it's going to be tagged with this tag. Let's call it F24, for example, which is representing your distribution, okay? So, yeah. So greedy method, yeah. I wanted to show how it looks like. Because uh, the good thing on the tarbo is that you have actually sources of all of the tools that we are using here. There is also a method which, uh, if you have multiple versions, it will just drag them all, which might be behavior that you are actually... See? None means only best match package. All means all packages matching the provide that you've mentioned. So provide is basically the record that you've set in comps. If you are looking for system release, and there are several packages providing system release, like Fedora release, Fedora release workstation, Fedora release server, 
if you will set none, it will be the only, the best matching one. As far as uh, system release packages goes, there is ugly hack inside uh, Pungy, which is always checking the name of the variant, and name of the system release package. So this is something that we would like to remove. Also, if you would use all, that means that it will include all packages matching the provide, which will be all the versions that could be in the repository. And build is the best match plus its dependencies, which is uh, what we are using here. Okay. It also includes, uh, if you have SRPM, let's say that you want only bash, but uh, bash, bash SRPM actually results into several RPMs. It's bash, bash documentation, probably bash man pages and so on. So uh, if you are using the build greedy method, it's going to include also rest of the RPMs which are located or created from the same SRPM as your requires. So in this case, bash doc should be part of the compose even when we didn't really ask for it and it's not really dependency of, uh, of bash. This can be useful because at least how we are building rel, if you, if you really want to include single RPM from SRPM, you as well want to include all of the rest. They might not be supported, they might be delivered in a different way, but they will be part of the compose. Okay? So, uh, yeah, let's go to here. So as you can see, uh, our compose consists of all of these packages, which are basically dependencies. And there was a question about dependencies, if it's going to include them or not. So uh, Panji, the binary that you've been, or I've been executing, it's called actually Panji Koji. And the Panji is just a tool which generates you dependencies and creates a single repository based on the inputs. Let me show you how it looks like, because it's really, I think this is the base stone of the whole tooling. So if you will go to the root of the compose directory, there is directory called work. Panji. Here is the configuration, which is basically group shells, which is defined in the comps file that you've seen. So it consists of KSH, uh, bash, and ZSH. Fedora release is added automatically. This is a logic of Panji, which I dislike. And I would like to see it removed, but <coughs> it is what it is. And here is the log. So um, Panji is actually saying, hey, I just found definition of Z shell or provide. I found these, uh, you know, K corn shell and bash as well. And let's just include them into the distribution. Um, I am skipping the SRPMs, so ignore the SRPM, uh, SRPM messages, because if I would like to include also all of the build dependencies, it would be huge. So here you can see that edit glibc because bash requires it, edit, edit and curse slips because bash requires it. So this is the way how the punch is actually getting all of the dependencies. So it's not the compose tool itself, it's a binary from the same package. It's called Panji and the compose tool is called Panji Koji. I know it's really tricky and I don't know why did they pick it up, but it is what it is. So if you are looking, hey, why the hell was Encursive Slips included in my compose? So you might as well, you know, see it, edit Encursive because of, you know, blah, blah, blah. So here it's because of Bash, right? So that's really that's really useful because if you if you are trying to get rid of some additional dependencies and you are saying hey why the hell did I get Firefox in you know compose with only shells so you'll see why was it you, you may consider actually dropping the dependency from spec file if it doesn't make sense and you can you know shrink your your distribution to minimum. So this is the Panji. Um, I've also told you that it's going to produce a uh, DVD. So uh, this is just the work directory, sorry. So we should go back to compose. Core. See, and the uh, DVD is here. As I said, it's marked in metadata. So if you would like to see all the ISO files for variant core, you can just iterate through the JSON, through product MD. Super simple. So, 
I have said that I would like to go through how Panji works, and uh, I've told you I've told you that uh, it has several phases. If something goes wrong, you might turn on the debug mode, and you can repeat just some specific phase. So. Uh, yeah, let's go into trees. And let's simulate that our compose failed. Uh, yeah, there is one thing. Uh, there is a security, let's say, check whether if your compose was finished successfully, it prevents you from rerunning it again and, ha you know, there is a message which is saying dangerous, the data is going to be unsupported, so it's really used only for debugging purposes, and you shouldn't destroy your working compose, which is working just fine. So let's let's put doomed into the status. Let's remove the, are we still okay with time? I hope so. Let's remove the ISO file. Let's say that something failed, I don't know, either dependency issue or so. Uh, or you can do arm. Yep. I think that the unsupported probably will mean in this case that our image manifest JSON will be completely broken after this change, but still you can debug what was wrong and so on. So if you would like to do some debugging, uh, there is actually env.sh, which is setting your environment because uh, these tools are not being installed, they won't be uh, part of your paths and so on. Source env sh, Panji, Koji, which is the compose tool. Panji is just the method, you know, gather or whatever. So Panji Koji, help, what does it offer? So we have a uh, debug mode. We might want to say set compose there. This is going to be trees, well, ah, defconf, <laughs> yeah, at least you can see on which product I'm working on. And you need to set config, that which you would like to process actually, so this is going to be conf, Panji conf in our case. And you might want to say just face, create ISO. Uh, one good thing, if you will skip debug mode, it will rerun everything, so always keep in mind that you want the debug mode. Also, it specifically specifically tells you dangerous. So, Panji debug mode, compose the conf. Yep, and nightly, of course. Critical. Checksums must not be blank. Oh, so I think this is a bug, actually. <laughs> Okay, so it should be working. Um, maybe let's let's try a different phase. Let's just try create repo. Um, JSON. Nice, nice. That's why it's called dangerous, guys. So uh, if I would do also just face and just face in it, I think it should actually work it out. Okay, nice. Okay, so let's just keep uh, rerunning composes, or we can debug it, and we can fix it and submit patch, which would be ultimate, I would say, goal of this uh, presentation. <laughs> uh, yeah, so what to do in, in case that some, something like this, this actually happened on your system, so this is like real life uh, scenario. Bunch of issues, new issue. Running. Great. This one. Face results into traceback. Right. Cool. And description. Mm. 
let's go for trains back but I would like to have again the crane ISO oh let's just uh, upload the traceback file Workspace Defcon 2016 Dreams. Ah, one one question. Do you know why I'm not using latest in this case? I know it would be working, but in real life, if you would have multiple compose multiple composes, latest is always similar to the last working one. So you want to be sure that you are actually touching the one that really failed. Uh, oh boy. How come it's not there? Image. Yeah, image fast. Okay. Wonder what I was doing last time. Global. And you trace back. So what really happened? JSON couldn't be decoded. So it really resulted into invalid JSON, right? Let's see what was actually composed metadata images JSON. Ah, there you go. So if you do like I still need to have some metadata. So what about to remove it? bank so Something like that. And it will be fixed. So this is the real <laughs> real life scenario. This is the profit. <laughs> um, so it's uh, in this case, oh yeah. I actually I think that the traceback would be enough. So in this case you can see that rerunning actually resulted into empty file instead of empty JSON. So there is definitely a code that needs to be fixed. So if you want to play with the compose, I think that I have some scenario for you, which would be not so easy to achieve if you are, you know, looking for challenges. <laughs> so uh, if you would like to do a deep dive into config files and you are really interested into it. So there is a bash doc file, uh, RPM, and I would like to make it in a separate variant, which won't be called, uh, or separate group, and it won't be called shells, but it's going to be called shell documentation. And it will consist only these documentation files. It would be quite easy to achieve if you want to play with it. If you don't, I can again go through the phases of the compose because I've already promised promised you that I am going to do that. But meanwhile, feel free to play with configuration. If you will go into test data, uh, 2016, there is a bunch of RPMs which is waiting for you. Oh. Right. Feel free to create whatever configurations you want. If it's going to fail, just report new issue. It will be awesome. Otherwise, let's go through the actual code. Hey, this is the original owner uh, or the you know creator of the of the tool. Just found a bug, <laughs> Daniel. Just found a bug. If you will rerun compose uh, well, yeah. in Punji. Um. Yeah. If you will rerun. Uh, yeah. Exactly. See, that's what I told you. <laughs> 
So, just to repeat for him, what we've done is that we went through some a list of tools that we've open sourced, which m somehow makes sense for a Linux distribution, and uh, we just did some testing compose with several shells, bash, corn shell, and so on. And we did some rerunning, and it failed. So I've told you that uh, <coughs> the Pungy actually runs things in phases, and as you know, you've seen the failure that we've had, and you've seen that we've actually decided to rerun just one phase, which is the create ISO. So basically, if you will go here, You can actually see all of the phases which we have. So each phase is represented by a Python module, I would say. If you need to add some deliverable, like atomic trees, which are actually requested in Pajur already, and they are quite, uh, I don't want to say urgent, but they are. <laughs> so feel free to submit either RFE or, you know, just implement new feature. It's really welcome. And uh, so you can see packet set, which is basically, I believe, getting the basic packet set for the distribution, right? Build install phase, which is doing the build images, gather phase, which is gathering all the devs, extra files. Uh, you guys might need some readme file or some non RPM content on DVD, like documentation, release notes. So these are actually defined in, um, in section in conf uh, config file called extra files. Source can be either a Git repository, it can be partial content of RPM, for example, some man pages or whatever, or some images from, let's say, in our case, Fedora logos. You have create repo phase, which is creating the actual repositories, product image, which is creating uh, basically product specific uh, installer image, create, create ISO phase, which is the phase which is responsible for creating images, right? The, uh, not the boot image, which is uh, in the built install, but uh, all of the DVDs that, you know, like the DVD that we've just created. Live images, if you want to have some live images, we don't in this case, it wouldn't make sense. Image build phase, this is for Docker, QCOW images. Uh, what else do we have in image build? I believe appliance images as well. Image checksum, checksum phase, this is calculating all of the checksums in the end of all ISO files images that you have and it's storing them in the image manifest, which then you, in ideal case, would import into PDC, right? And pass it to CI for testing. And test phase, this is just running repo closures on the repositories if everything was fine. I believe the behavior is that if uh, some dependencies were not satisfied, it's not going to fail. It's going to write errors in the logs, which can be produced again by QE, and that's it. So these are the phases. Uh, if you want to create a new one, you would just uh, write a few lines here. If you will go into source code, this is quite nicely structured, actually. And most, basically, all of these files are representing uh, phases. You can see that creating, for example, this is Docker image phase. It's not that long. So, uh, I don't know, 200 lines, 250 lines. So would you like to go through some configurations uh, that you might actually want to achieve or if in your head you have some solution which you are not sure if Panji would be able to cover? I'm, I think that some people might have such, such, such questions. Uh, feel free to ask, we can go through it, we can try to map it. As I, I was already talking about variants, uh, in our case we've had single variant called core, you might have vari variant called server client, it can consist of several groups. You might actually have uh, some additional repositories for client. Let's call it, for example, web server module. And uh, that can consist of different packages. Uh, and then you can have something called integrated, integrated layered product, which might be variant less specific. So it can be used on any variant. So, I think that somebody here said that he was working on his own distribution. I'm not sure if it was gentleman here or somebody on the right side. 
Somebody was raising hand when I was asking who was already building his own distribution. Oh, yeah, sure. <laughs> so, I have, you know, a few scarves here and I would like to really share them with you. So, ah. Uh, so uh, would this be any use sure, sure. Uh, as use I would say that uh, if you would use it just to create repositories and not for distribution, then it's the right tool. You said that you are not taking these dependencies or you are including them as well? Yeah, we're including them and we don't want the full people available. So we exactly, exactly. Sure, sure. Uh, well, what you can say is uh, for example, if you would have just scenario that you want just some dependencies and not the others. So, and if you are using the EPL, you can set EPL as the Lucas side repository, for example, and you can say, hey, just don't inclu include anything which is already in there and uh, include just the dependencies which are not in EPL. That could actually work for you. Yeah, I would say, I would say that it's the right tool. So, is it in your private branch or? Uh, yeah, it's my private. Mm -hmm. So, in this case, his name is Daniel. You can go to pajor.io slash panji, go for forks. Just see Daniel here. Let's look at his fork. And uh, actually, you need to switch to the branch. Yeah. This one, right? Uh, and in, in the there, there is, uh, uh, I'm not sure if we are actually able to go too fast under different uh, branch here. Uh, you can, uh, as you can see, there are branches listed. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So there is gather DNF bin, right? Yeah. Punch together, I guess. So as Daniel said, that seems like a basically a slim down Pangy, which doesn't do that overhead and just prints you the dependencies, right? And it, it, it can only print the package set. Yeah. package set. And it can obviously work on Python, but if you are interested in the, uh, some structures and mm -hmm. details, you can, you can use that uh, directly as a Scratch Oh, yeah. It would be nice if it would result into some JSON file, for example, that you can process. <laughs> yep. So whatever is your use case, you can have it covered here. You can call the function, which is which is going to return you the packages, or if you want the repo creation as well, you can use whole Panji. I can see some use case with this script actually. <laughs> also, uh, I don't know. I didn't want to mention it here, but uh, basically. Below build system, we have additional layer called this Git, which is a uh, management of uh, Git repositories. And there are some conditions under which you can actually commit or you may not commit to the repository. Like you need to have approved Bugzilla in order to do some fix. And I've seen that release engineering uh, on GitHub, we have, it was good luck actually that uh, we were able to acquire release engineering. <laughs> There is uh, this Git, which is the same name of tooling that we are using internally. I just checked it and it looks uh, a little bit different. 
and I'm not sure what's the stage uh, of it, but you might consider having a look at it if you are looking for some uh, solution inside the company for, let's say, some uh, detailed level access to Git repositories as far as commit policy goes. It might be a nice place to look at, so you don't have to create something on your own. You might, you might just use like GitHub fork, right? And use some moderators, but this is giving you more powerful rules and conditions under which you can actually commit into a repository or you might not. Uh, I've seen some graphs, how it works here. So client would be developer, right? You have a local Git, you have this Git server. Basically you can cook anything locally, but you can commit it under some conditions like your sp uh, commit message needs to, you know, reference uh, some bug and so on. So I'm not sure what's the state, but um, it looks it's well doc documented. So feel free to check it out. That's something that I wasn't aware of actually until yesterday. There are also several projects. Some of them are actually related to Maven and so on. However, I wasn't mentioning them because Maven is not necessarily the deliverable that you are actually looking at as far as Linux distribution goes. By the way, if you are actually, uh, if you are interested in the build system, which I believe is really advanced, then you might, you might just use it in the company, uh, especially if you are interested in reproducible builds, which might be critical. Um, there are several tools which allows you to do some testing instance in a few minutes because uh, last time when I was setting it up from the scratch it took me a week which is terrible and these scripts will really do it in a few minutes one of them is Kojak I just tested it yesterday it's not working so the code is not really current but I believe that we have a solution which is generating docker images for the build system so am I just going to check it and it should work I haven't seen it here in release engineering this is Doc Paul, this is the friends. No. Koji Dojo. Docker images for testing services that need to talk to Koji. That could be it, I believe. Hub image notes, yes. Sure. So it looks like it's um, basically a Koji Koji image that you can use. So, as I said, Panji can have uh, multiple input sources. One of them could be a repository. This is what we used, or you can use whole build system. Then, basically, the input for the Koji would be uh, for yeah for Panji would be the tag, which is uh, holding. Uh, if you do list tags or Koji list tags, you can see all the tags with Fedora. Uh, sorry, it's full screen and you can't see it. So basically there is a whole history of Fedora, so if you would like to see what was the latest package in Fedora 19, you can easily search it here. Uh, so the Compose then is just taking the image, uh, sorry, the, the tag, and the tag uh, consists of, let's say, thousands of builds. And it's just iterating through all of them in instead of the repository. And then the Panji is actually linking the file instead of copying it as, as in this case because uh, Koji is actually having its own structure with data and if you are, uh, let's say, if you are really picky about uh, saving space, then in linking is the best choice, I believe. If the file system with packages is well protected, it's probably the best solution that you can do. So if you would be interested about, you know, like what packages are actually stored in the tag, uh, tag it's going to be huge. What is size? Uh, as I said, it's one of the options for a small company. It might actually make sense to use repository instead of build system for a company which is really worried about reproducibility and security. Build system is way to go, and the integration is really seamless. Ah, uh, no, it's going to take a um, long time. Yeah. Thousands and thousands of packages. Just saying, you know, if you want to, if you all try it at home, it will be probably much faster. So, any questions? There was a question, and I believe uh, it was a good point, so I think that you deserve a scarf. There you go. Any other questions? Or some issues on Pajura? It will be even better. Uh, you, you mentioned that you, you are able to build also the Python images. 
Yes. Yes, we can build. Uh, it's part of the image build. Uh, so if you will check uh, image factory project, uh, Koji. We have implementation which supports basically anything within the image factory. So <coughs> basically, our implementation is. Um, let me show you some example. Oh. Here is the configuration RST. So uh, the section here is saying for variant server, consider that Fedora server in this case, we would like to have Docker file, which is going to have suffix. Uh, the format is going to be Docker. Suffix is going to be this one. The reason why I'm actually putting suffix as well is that single task can result into, let's say, 20 images. And these images will have all different suffixes, and this is a way to map them, because unfortunately, Koji doesn't provide any metadata which would say, this is Docker, this is uh, Tcal. It's just output of single task. This, this, there is definitely space for improvement, but as far as of now, that's what we have. So the this is the image name, target, this is the target in Koji. Target consists of uh, several packages which are going to be used for building of such image. It has also some comms groups which are saying, hey, for a Docker build, let's use this set of packages. For QCOW image build, let's use this set of packages. Then, of course, you need to have kickstart file, which is saying what's going to be the package set of such image. Such kickstart file may look like uh, like thinking what, what is safe to show. I think this is production, so six, seven, for example. So this is how the Kickstarter file is going to look like. And this is saying, hey, this uh, QCOW, was it QCOW? No, Docker. So this Docker image is going to consist of Bash, Lips, Linux, Python, blah, blah, blah. And we don't want uh, Lip, SS, Upstart, and kernel and firmware packages. And then the uh, image build is um, Koji, or sorry, the Panji is actually running Koji image build config file. The config file which, which was generated uh, by Panji. Basically, it's just a transformation of this section so here it will be image build. Hmm, this looks quite obsolete to me actually. And so it's basically going to transform this into any file which we pass to brew image build or Koji image build. And this is going to produce image. Bungie is going to gather them from the Koji tasks. So it's going to save tarballs inside decompose and that's it. So it's just a matter of configuration. We already know how to do that for quite a long time, actually. So, so basically that's how the, for example, Fedora server is for the... I believe that Fedora is adopting this tooling right now. So they are using actually some huge bash script, but the goal, as I said, is to use the same set of tooling. Okay. And uh, I believe that they might actually be using it for running the QCOW images, but it's not the images which are actually going to reach production yet. I know that they had uh, several several RFEs uh, regarding the image build, but I believe in next Fedora release definitely. But I don't I don't think it's quite there yet. But uh, as far as our internal products goes, this is how we generate images that we ship right now. So, yeah, like yesterday and day before. <laughs> Exactly. It, that's that's how it works. So we have several approaches in Koji how you can actually generate these uh, images. One of them is just use Anaconda inside QCOW image, which will generate some tree structure. You, ha you are just going to, you know, create archive from the structure and generate metadata. The other approach is create QCOW image and then run a tool. I think it's directly Docker, which can turn the QCOW image into Docker image. The only problem is that the solution using Docker takes about one hour while the uh, installation and just uh, making tarball stream the metadata 
takes uh, 10 minutes. So I believe that people actually, uh, the general mood is go towards indirection, which is the Q count transformation into Docker. However, uh, uh, the time spent on a single image, which is like 50 or 80 megabytes, one hour, this is terrible, you know, it's not worth it yet. But we could be there, you know, in, I got some promise that in a year or so we could be at 20 minutes and then it might be actually consider, then it might be considerable. Yeah, but you are right. Kickstart means that we are actually using Anaconda. Cool, I think that deserves a scarf. <laughs> gentleman here deserves it as well because he had a lot of activity. Thanks. So any other questions? Oh, uh, no, 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 no. This is actually just uh, creating repositories and deliverables, but the actual build from source is done in Koji. You can use Koji to rebuild something and then punch it to create a repository out of RPMs built from the SRPM. So we are thinking about a layer below this tool. But it's what we are doing on in one unnamed product or project right now. <laughs> Exactly, and Koji is using mock. <laughs> yep, exactly. So if you have your own kind of needs to, to build something in the same way, and um, Koji's or kind of build systems are too big, I would recommend mock because it's it actually pulls down and does everything in a chain route, which is always the same. Exactly. So the, the output is much more predictable than and dependent. I, I can also recommend it for like uh, testing purposes because it's just saving you so much time and you don't need to have the whole chain of infrastructure on your laptop. The only problem is it shouldn't go into production because it's, you know, you could have injected anything. While in Koji, you can actually see what was in the build route and everything. But yes, definitely. It's the same technology which is actually being used in Koji. It's just being somehow locked. That's what I told you. It stores everything and never deletes any single data. Oh, instead. So uh, you can go back Scratch. and you can yeah. cut through the database and see how everything looked at a certain time. So let me show you such example, actually. Uh, is this difficult to install? Uh, no, no. If you will use, uh, like, the, uh, how was it called? Docker Dojo or, or Koji Dojo uh, or Kojak it takes a few minutes. It's out of the box, basically, and R RPM Fusion is still using something old based on CVS, right? Whoa, well, I don't know. I don't really know about that's RPM Fusion. Problem. Yeah, that's their problem, exactly. But so many people from Twitter are using it, so it's, it's also problem of users, etc. Yeah. Well, well, RPM Fusion is not affiliated with Fedora in a proper way. It's like yeah. Uh, So let me just show you the uh, use case of the database. Damn. I believe that it should have an option to actually show also the events, right? This is the task ID. But basically, if you would like to, uh, yeah, so let's do this history, help, let's turn events, and you want to build, um, no, where am I, here, build, and you would like to see when exactly was this, bu this build build, and what was in the build route, it's super simple, build, no address, oh, yeah, 
damn I'm sharing so many secrets here <laughs> so here um, so it was tagged here but this is not exactly the build time but if you will check actually like brew list oh, Koji list packages um, or list builds or list tag you can set actually on um, if you will look at the build you can see the target that it was built against which in this case was Fedora 23 candidate and you can actually see that this is the actual build root build and you can specify the event tag oh yeah you can actually specify the event I believe which is the event of uh, the build time tagged into testing updates untagged tag. you can use for example this event and that will give you the exact content of the yeah you want the inherit as well inherit and latest as far as this event goes and that will show you the whole build route all the rpms that were available at the build time of the package in that certain moment which is really cool and it's just going to take uh, quite long So what I consider really nice here, Koji, finally, uh, list tag inheritance. If you would like to see how the structure of repositories goes, th then you can see that uh, Fedora 23 build environment is inheriting basically from Fedora 22 updates. This is inheriting from there, 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 and it goes back to Fedora 18. So this is quite nice. You can create quite a uh, same for the actual tag web builds. You can create such structures if you have multiple products. Let's say my product is going to be, I don't know, HTTPD, like some web server. Uh, you might actually want to inherit from either Fedora or CentOS, the packages which are actually used for building that. You can add some more in your own tag, which is really nice. And you can just reuse all the bits that you want. There are some certain uh, configurations which might allow you to prevent inheriting from certain tags, like, hey, I'm working on let's call my tech development and I don't I want to prevent any production product to use my bits so I can set a I can actually tweak policy to prevent uh, inheriting from such tags which for example have development in the name or something you know there are several conditions and you have to think of so many scenarios how to prevent actually the actual user from from consuming your data but it offers you variety of Rules that you can use. So how it builds the event? Uh, how it builds the event? I don't know. Oh yeah, sure. Oh. <laughs> oh yeah, sure. So I think that we are basically done here. It uh, if you will wait for probably to the rest of the presentation, it might, but it's going to be twelve thousand plus packages. You know, <laughs> so huge. You know, this is just like end of the presentation. I basically showed you the Pajor or the GitHub, so you know where to look for the bits, you know where to report issues, you've seen how to report the issues. Yeah, so if you guys would like to play with it in your company, consider starting with Koji. Check the Koji Dojo, that will help you. If you are into Docker, if not, check Kojak. It's called Koji Out of Box. Uh, GitHub, Kojak. Koji in a box. Uh, I believe it works with Fedora 22, it works with RHEL 7, works with RHEL 6. Just run it. There is option install, create VM, or create Docker. So you can install it locally inside the VM or in Docker image. 
it should be quite simple. Authentication is done through certificates or Kerberos or password. Take your pick. So I guess this is all from me. Thanks. Yeah. Please keep in mind that you can read this talk on the website and we are still looking for the <coughs> lightning talks. So you can propose your own if you want or vote for the existing one. Thank you. Yeah, thanks a lot. Oh. Máme tady někde koš? To nevadí. Poho, dokument, dokumenty ode mě máš, že? Haha, <laughs> máš to zprávat. <laughs> ne, já jsem ten išu jsem už našel, ale... Tam jsou ve skutečnosti dva problémy. Jednak tím, že skipneš všechny fázy kromě oh, create isu, tak se nevygenerují všech sami, ty se v samostatné fázi. Tak Aby se měl zjistil, že když něco takového odstraníš, tak ono by se to pozdělo stejně vložit nový záznam do toho image manifestu. To tam nemáme ošetřený. Jo, tohle jako není vůbec Ale testované. Proto je tam to, proto je tam to <laughs> dangers. Jo. Co ty Ty jo, to je tak krásně teplý teď. Má na to peníze, co bude. A, ne, přemýšlel jsem, že by na něco šel. Čau, čau. Ale... Kočka doma, nevím, na co bys, na, na co bys šel ty, jdeme dneska no, prezentaci nemá, že? Ne, to musím máš zítra. Právě dneska je to nejvící chtěl zjít do města, tak ti mě řeknu, ale jdu teď zase do A možná bych dal někde oběd, ale to možná jsme mou kočku. Promiň, to je moje nebo tvoje, nevíš? Is it yours or mine? I think it was yours, because... I think it was mine, actually, I just... Yeah. It's, it's not mine, definitely oh. not. <laughs> so yeah, hey, hi, good morning. Hey, good morning as well. Uh, yeah. Can so, yeah. Yeah, uh, I noticed that there are two names for this talk, right? Sorry, say it again? Uh, I noticed that there are two names for this talk. Is it right or not? Yeah, uh, I do it and a colleague of mine is actually doing it. Uh -huh, okay. So, yeah. So, uh, he is probably joining now in a couple of minutes as, yeah, as well. Yeah, we'll open the door. Do you want to ask him to interview you somehow? No, we can. Well, actually, this is the second uh, part of, uh, of the workshop. We already had the first part yesterday, mm -hmm. and probably maybe people who come yeah, to today have already been there yesterday, so I don't think there was any introduction. Mm -hmm. Isn't that, isn't that okay, okay. Yeah. Uh, so yeah. you already know that we can uh, give them some response okay. for the questions, so this can fill them around the point, yeah. you can you know, encourage them to, uh, to yeah. ask, the, ask the questions. Yeah. Uh, well, Oops. Uh, would it be possible to ask you to put your presentation on this pic? So I already did yesterday. So it should be there. Yeah. Okay, cool. Uh, and then we should give you one more. One more? Okay. Yeah, yeah give me one more. You have to go through. Can you use it to get some guests to the party tonight? Well, or do we do they need this, this badge here? This badge? Okay. Or you can ask or the easy photo at the hiding spot. Uh -huh. You will have some free tickets. Okay. And, and just. Just. You guys are doing a workshop in here? Yes. Okay, I'm going to leave you with some USBs. You uh, already have some. I know, but the, there was some. And we can do replicate the new version which provides us quality before. So. Okay. Should we use them? Yeah. Yeah. No, 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 only if you need them. It's no, a, no. It's so if we if we have the one f the one from yeah, yesterday, so just just keep them. Yeah, yeah. Someone just uh, drop down yeah. the new, new version this morning. So can you just yeah, check that the current yeah. version? So just if you don't need them, don't touch them. Yeah, hang yeah. out. Thanks. So I just replicated to all those uh, push drive. Okay, let me double check that it's the current version. So. <coughs> Ja, dat is een
fotka o osobě později všichni měli mobil, tak nikdo prostě to fakt a ukazoval tam taky fakt, jako, že největší provider informace na světě nevytváří žádný content, největší prodejce nevlastní žádný prostě zboží a takový věc. Technologie na to budou Já, tak se But it's also on this the slide. E. Yeah, so E R. Yeah, E R F. E R F. But as I said, it's also on the Thorsten Scherf. 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 Yeah. Scherf. 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 Exactly. <laughs> Everybody still has uh, the keys from yesterday, or if they uh, gave them away. Yeah, but uh, well, probably everybody who was there yesterday already uh, uh, copied the, uh, the content over to their, to their local to their local machine. So there, and there was actually no need to, to, to give them the, the updated uh, uh, USB stick. So yeah, only if uh, somebody is showing up who was not there yesterday, then of course uh, they, they they need it. But uh, otherwise, it's, it's not required.